Welcome back to the channel, Fishing Freaks, and good day to you. Waking up here next to the lake, gotta love it. Just packing up, and we're about to head out and do some crappie dangling today. Look at this sexy rig, by the way. Just the matching, pff, looks good in the morning. Wake up next to it, man. Sleeping in the hammock last night. I wouldn't really call it sleeping. The mosquitoes were prevalent, they were out. They were ready to go uh, and they were trying to get in here. I had the bug net, so they couldn't really get in. They could kind of stab me from the side, but uh, it's just hearing them. It just keeps you up. And then I, I, I think I'm, I'm done. I'm done with the hammock camping. I'm getting a little old. I got to figure out another solution. Turn on the power to the garms here. And that's it. Ready to rock and roll, kids. We're using crappie baits today. If you're into bass lures, that's good too. I got a lot of them. GugaSquad.com, use my promo code LFG at checkout. Also get you some summer threats. Four-way stretch, moisture wicking, incredibly comfortable, and keeps the UV rays off of you. This is gonna be my second year not wearing sunscreen. I just wear these. I wear my gloves, and I wear a uh, face shield, and I wear pants a lot too. So, sunscreen, I don't like it. It's goopy, it's oily, and there's probably a lot of stuff in there that's not great for you. So, protect your skin with some, some coverings. Look at that sunrise, y'all. That's smash the like button worthy so never been on this lake before so that's always entertaining to watch just gotta you know break down what's going on there's a lot of bait uh it sets up good for crappie lots of brush there's lots of standing timber uh at least on this section of the lake where i'm at i kind of want to get out of this area because i explored it a little bit yesterday and go to uh where i think has more deep water access and check some of those points and just areas where I think might have uh, some brush piles. That, that's mostly what we're going to try to fish today. I don't think there's going to be a ton of suspended fish. I could be completely wrong. But my goal is to get 12 decent crappies. I don't know if there's big ones in here. I don't know if it's, you know, it's a numbers thing. I don't know. But if I can walk away on a, off a new lake, get 12 crappies in the box, I'll be pretty content with that. So let's get cranking. Guys, I don't know if I've ever seen so much brush and there's so much bait in here. I've, I've got to think there's some good bass in here. This might be a low key bass fishery that you know, everyone just talks about the crappie in here, but this might be a low key big bass factory. So I just came to, uh, you know, a huge, just a huge point and um, as soon as I got up on the point, I started seeing rocks and brush and just all sorts of fish. I don't know if, yeah, the, most of these are not gonna be crappie, I'm, I'm assuming, but there's just a lot of activity. There's a lot of movement going on. One piece of brush that's in about 20 foot. The other one is looking like it's in 12. The one in 12 just looks like it has more fish on it, bigger fish. There are things just crawling on this point. I think it's bass. I think if I broke out a crankbait, I'd probably smoke a few. Just mega pile. Whew. Oh, it gets me excited. Do a little live look in here. He's looking to get some. got one little guy I knew that was probably what's living on there I see a few bigger ones for sure this might be a deal where we're just weeding through good news is he choked it and hung on but I've I have seen a couple of big blobs the thing is like I don't know if it's a big female crop or I don't know if it's uh, a bass <laughs> 
or we just keep running around and look for uh, the bigger ones. What is, gosh, just micros, man. Look at the school, look at the school of them. They're just, I had like 30 of them just came off the pile. This is insane, guys. I'm not sure I've ever been to a lake that has this uh, kind of population of crappie. Most of the lakes I fish, you, you uh, they're a little harder to find, but when you find them, it's like, it's gonna be a keeper, almost guaranteed. It's gotta be a good one down in there and deep part of it. Golly, oh, that was a good thump. That was an actual crappie thump there. Oh, I just saw the fish. I saw the fish uh, take off and it was a good one. All right, I'm gonna throw a different jig in there just to switch it up. I kind of got snagged on the pile, screwed it, screwed it up a little bit, but we will uh, toss a dangle dart in there. This is fun to me, guys. Like the, uh, the actual, you know, there's a challenge here with these crappie. I've got to switch things up. It's, it's, it's like that bass fishing, the drive of bass fishing, always trying to uh, figure out what the fish are doing. But we've just got way more targets. All right, first break off of the trip right there. If you guys crappie fish a lot, we make some sick tackle organization boxes for uh, your crappie gear, the medium size. So not the full big one. It's perfect for crappie jigs tons of dividers in there and these things are rock solid re-rig and keep moving but don't forget to use my promo code when you shop at googlesquad.com lfg get you some of those save save even more especially when we got a sale going on just the way these fish are acting i think the that 16th is gonna definitely be a player I'm just gonna show you guys my gear that i've got going on right now for uh for forward gosh they they chased it but they didn't eat it there were two what looked like keepers and they're just chasing it out i <laughs> Woo, guys this is this is crappie fishing real crappie fishing right here for toughies all right we're gonna go ahead and do a move here Look at that rod locker, by the way. Just locked and loaded, ready for, for everything from squirrels to bears. So the last thing that I'm gonna rig up here is a snacky swimmer. It, for those pitch casts, you know, the, a little minnow like that, well, that when I'm staying far away and if I could swim it through there on a swing, they seem to like that better than you know, a, a bait that's not really moving that much. This one's got a nice tight wiggle to it. So I've got three different setups. I have two uh, long poles. I have an eight foot, I have a 10 foot, and then I have a seven foot. And this is essentially a, a you know, dang near an ultralight. And it's really easy for me to cast this, this bait with it. So when I'm casting out, I don't need the long rod. Just gonna watch it come through these fish. Oh, they smoked it. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, and that's a big one. There we go, baby. There we go. Just gotta switch it up. I have seen this so many times with bigger crappies, especially, but even just mid-sized crops. This this bait is incredible i mean I, all fish love it but crappie you saw I, I threw two different types of baits in there it was kind of just uh you know they'd follow it they'd look at it but they wouldn't eat it and they get that little wiggle on it and it's it's done deal all right we're gonna have to share some of our crappie space with our food he's going in he's in the box sharing the space Pretty sure that was the biggest one in there, but just a really slow retrieve. 
really slow. But that bait is wiggling pretty quick. It's got such a tight, tight wiggle on it. Oh, another one. Oh, another one bumped it, but he didn't eat it. We're dealing with some, uh, some tricky wickets right here, I can tell you. All right, time for a little beat break. Break with some champs. I'm gonna idle around this point a little more, look for some more piles. And then uh, just change locales. Keep going until we find the big ones. He's only eight feet deep, 16 feet of water. This turret, guys, this is the freaking deal for doing this. It is amazing. It's just, they're going right up to it, put their nose on it. They're not committing. God, complete dead stick. I just got licked on the complete dead stick. Sometimes that's, and look at this. This is just straight up dangle. Got him. Oh my God, I thought I had him. He wanted that thing just not moving. Do not move it, sir. Woo, these are tricky. I'm enjoying this challenge. Yeah, they just can't help themselves. You see, like there's my bait. There's fish going right to it. But not eating, not eating. Let's see what treetop buddy does here. Treetop buddy, you want a treat? See, he's backing away from it. It's like he knows the deal. Crappie are so curious. It's like they have to check it out. They have to come over to it, but they don't necessarily eat it. Oh, that one, man, he just he spooks away like every time. That's crazy, he just won't eat. Micros, we're on the micros. Go tell your buddies, I'm here. I'm probably gonna leave soon, so don't even bother. Don't even bother biting. Just a massive pile full of crops, but I want the big angry ones. Oh my gosh, they're just literally grabbing the tail. Ugh. That one came back a couple times. Now you're getting borderline, dude. You're probably a niner. Green series rods actually have a uh, tape measure on them. Oh my gosh, hang on a second. You are a, that is a 10, but I'm, it's not a, it's not a happy 10. It's like a eh, 10, it's like a, Game warden comes by, make you sweat, 10. That's not really what I'm looking for. <clears throat> Sometimes fishing these brush piles on live scope, it's like an addiction. You know, you you want to break up with it. You're like, oh man, there's just there's a chance. There's so there's so much love in there. Sometimes you just gotta walk away. I'm giving a lot of love and I'm not receiving it. spot big old tree big old submerged tree you know I'm using side imaging mark it I'll come back I'll get into the wind and then I'll look at it so because it's really hard to cast left and right and behind you it's much easier to put your nose into it have your spot lock calibrated and then send it straight ahead or just just off to the just quartering a little bit is okay. Not excited about the size. I cannot believe how many micro crops are in here. A lot of life though. A couple of big sigs, big signatures. Chasing it, not eating it. New bumping bug going on. 
That's what I've had the most bites on, but going with black and pink. A little pearl glitter, eighth ounce head, pink, of course. Got him. There's a keeper. He hung on to it pretty good. Join your friend in there. Like having that cooler right there, that's cool. Your friend bit it. Got him. One of the dead stick. Oh! Too small anyway. There he is. Oh, come here. Ah, dead stick. That is number three, ladies and gentlemen. Slow grind. Slow grind. 11 incher, standard unit eater. These fish are really pale in here, I've noticed. There you go, buddy. Don't slime up my drinks too much. Oh, there we go. Oh, God, that one felt nice. That one actually felt nice. They're being nasty to me. Ah, I am just putting it right on their schnoz. All the big ones are smart. Give a little prop wash. Just not happy with them. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna try a few more and then I may just be taking these to the skillet. Vengeance eating sesh. I'm not giving up yet. I might find the magic pile. Like just a hair under 10. This is without a doubt some of the toughest crappie I've done in the summertime. I mean, they are, there's like 30 fish down there. And I cannot, I definitely can't get the big ones to commit. These little ones that come nip at it, so many follows. Uh, live minnows would even be tough right now. Just goes to show you, just because you have live scope doesn't mean you're gonna catch them. Look at that one, come right out after it. Unbelievable how they just shoot out, don't commit. Got him. That's a miracle. And I think he's gonna keep. On the old natural dangle dart. He came out just like the others, charged it. Just barely 10, I'm gonna take him. Oh, that gives me four. I'm at a third of what I wanted to catch. God, sometimes you just give it that little shake. I do like it. Ah, oh, see, he nipped it when I shook it, but he just didn't, didn't fully commit. Oh, well, that was a big one. Trolling mugger got it. It's gonna be a fun, fun little experiment there. It's a full, gotta take the prop off situation. Oh, dropped my nut. All right, uh, yep, yeah, we're just gonna call it a day on that one. If you haven't taken your uh, trolling motor prop off ever, I highly suggest doing it. You'll probably find a few goodies in there. Now I want to give you guys post systems report now that we're home. With the new electronics, with the turrets, full out, screens all the way up, never turning anything off. Pro guide is showing us 76% battery left on our on our lithium 24 volt. We're still showing 94%, uh, it's sitting at 13, uh, over 13 volts right now for AGM, which is which is high, which means we got, we got plenty of power. I, I just don't see how the dual AGMs are ever gonna give me a problem with the two graphs I got running, with everything, basically. It's, it's so strong. I wanted to give you guys that report because um, 
you know, data is fun. I'm happy with all systems except for leakage. At first I was thinking it was just the backwash coming over the back that, that has been uh, an issue today, running like less than half a tank, hardly any backwash. And I just noticed there's, there's water leaking in. It could be from the plug. I'm not 100% sold on this, uh, this plug system that you, you turn in and out with the cable. I might just rip that out and put in like a standard plug, but it could be the holes, my, my drill job from putting in the transducer, which by the way, that worked really well. Transducer mounted up nice. I was thinking it was gonna be a little too low. Talked to my buddy, Zach, he said it was, it was good. So, uh, and it, it read well, and I didn't see any issues um, with being on pad with it. So that all, was, that all was good. Now we got four crappies. We're gonna clean them. I'm gonna do something different with these that I normally don't do. Yes, sir. All right, buddy. You slammed it the hardest. So you get the, you get the first cleaning. Completely off. Well, that one is full of worms. That's never appetizing. Nobody tell my wife. All right, fishing freaks. I've decided to do something completely different with these crappie. Not enough to do a full crispy fry or fish cakes or any of that. I've never made a dip before, so I'm going to attempt to make a crappie dip with Stephanie's help in the kitchen. So what I've done here is I've had these smoking, it's at 170 right now, for around two hours. We're going to see how they look. I've never done this before, but I think it's a good thing to do with only having four crappies. Let's see what we got popping up in here. about it. In the kitchen with OSG. As always, welcome back. First ever fish dip. They look like little crispies. Uh, that's okay, you throw them in the dip, nobody will ever know. It's like, I think it's kind of cheating. It, it's a way to, uh, Hide your mistakes. Hide your mistakes. Well, I, I, I wasn't sure, guys. I attempted to do this, and maybe you can help me out in the comments for fish dip smoking, cooking. How do you do it? This one actually looks pretty good. That one looks ready to go. Some of these are just hard little flavor crispies. Well, I say we just shred them up and put them in here. They're fully cooked. Yeah, some of them are like overcooked. Really, yeah. That's good. That's probably what you want. You don't want them undercooked. So that, that one's flaking nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Coming Just right out of its little shell. Add that in there. Okay, here we go. I mean, we're just gonna go aggressive with it. Crispy skins. And then I think once you combine all the your ingredients that you want, you throw it in the freezer for maybe like 10, 15 minutes. Get it cooled down, yep. Nobody wants that, like a hot fish dip, ew. So you got um, sour cream and cream cheese. No uh, sour cream, just cream oh, cheese okay. and a pat of butter. I guess you could add sour cream too. Ooh, buttery, okay. And then I just added some pickled oh, onions. Stick it in it. Oh yeah. Oh wow, it's gummy. That's what I don't like, it's gummy. I don't like that either, but. I don't know, guys. I don't know. That one has its own shell, and it didn't even have the skin. So. <laughs> Do you want it? I feel like adding some of this crust might be good. I uh, know it's got the flavor in yeah, it. Yeah, flavor I, crust. I agree. If you can, I think somehow... at this part, I'm gonna like chop some of that up. Okay. I'm gonna like actually cut it. In this rare moment, you get to see what is in our freezer, folks. Don't look too hard. Don't look too hard. We got. Italian deer sausage, burger, popsicles. And here's our chilled creamy crappie dip. Woo! Here's a fly. Get that out of here. All right, I'm gonna take my, my baguette mm -hmm. that OSG has prepared. All right, you ready? Scoop to... me a, a proper serving there, ma'am. 
A little bit more? Yeah, put it right on the edge for. You know, it kind of looks like a like a whipped potato. It does. It, it kind of looks like mashed potatoes. Oh, you know what would be good? Like some maybe some bacon in there. Uh, bacon would be good, probably to cover up all my mistakes. <laughs> but the the texture does look. Um, it looks fishy. Yeah. Well, I, really, you think so? There's I'm my bread. Kind of scared. You're scared. I'm scared. Why? I don't know. Is Just I, like cold fish is weird to me. Great. And I don't like salmon dips. I don't know. I just wanted to try something different today. Oh, I love salmon dips. Okay, this is not your thing then. It's mine. Then, okay. Don't tell them what you think. I'm going to wait. I might be the true taster here. You think that's I'm going to hold my opinions. Okay. And, see. And, wa and wait till you try a bite. Okay. It's funny that you mentioned bacon. Does it taste like bacon? Kid's toy, randomly in the background. It tastes like a bacon dip. I thought so too. Did you not put bacon in it? No. You can't even taste the fish. No. It tastes like a bacon dip. You get the texture of the fish. But is, was it them. the seasonings that I put in there? That Probably make it, mixed with the onion and the sour cream. I think it's delicious. Oh, I would totally order that at a restaurant. As like That's an appetizer? a fantastic appetizer. Mm -hmm. I really do like that. Bold flavor. He did incredible on the dip. Let's get another shot of this. You know, having some of that crust, the crust tastes like bacon. You see the the fishy texture, but man, everything else, and the perfect uh, creaminess to it. It's like this part tastes like bacon. Yeah, you get those flavor bombs mm. from the crispy part of the fish. You know what, I use pickled onions instead of just straight red onions. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gives it like a little bit of sweet taste. I think it's a little salty though. Whatever seasoning you added, I think you went a little overboard. I had a little too much. It's a little salty. I'll have another one. Well, you know, we eat fish all the time. This is a nice twist. It is. You got a project I'm working on. So I quite possibly could have just figured out an air conditioning situation for my truck. Uh, being a Guy that likes to fish in the summertime, still travel. That's one of my favorite things about spring is truck camping and fishing. It's just when it gets hot, summer. I, what I did last night, y'all, with the hammock, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that ever again unless it's like a little better conditions. By the way, did I show you my, my chiggers? Let me give you a chigger update. Yeah, at first I didn't know if like the mosquitoes had gotten me through the mesh on the the hammock, but uh, it's a full leg, it's a full leg coverage kind of deal. I, to be honest with you guys, it was a really tough day on the water, and it it just shows you. I just busted out new 12 inch units, live scope, clean picture, found hundreds of crappie, and they were tough. Tough to catch. So we're on to the next one, guys, and I think I've got a solution. I might have just figured out to keep me nice and breezy on those hot summer nights in Texas, so you guys stay tuned. I'll see you back in the great outdoors on the next one.